Einstein synchronization is a convention for synchronizing clocks at different places by means of signal exchanges. This synchronization method was used already by telegraphers in the middle 19th century, but was popularized by Henry Poincaré and Albert Einstein who applied it to light signals and recognized its fundamental role in relativity theory. Its principal value is for clocks within a single inertial frame. Einstein. According to Albert Einstein's prescription from 1905, a light signal is sent at time from clock 1 to clock 2 and immediately back, e.g., by means of a mirror. Its arrival time back at clock 1 is. This synchronization convention sets clock 2 so that the time of signal reflection is defined to be. The same synchronization is achieved by slowly transporting a third clock from clock 1 to clock 2 in the limit of vanishing transport velocity. The literature discusses many other thought experiments for clock synchronization giving the same result. The problem is whether this synchronization does really succeed in assigning a time label to any event in a consistent way. To that end one should find conditions under which clocks once synchronized remain synchronized. The synchronization is reflexive, that is any clock is synchronized with itself. The synchronization is symmetric, that is if clock A is synchronized with clock B then clock B is synchronized with clock E. The synchronization is transitive, that is if clock A is synchronized with clock B and clock B is synchronized with clock C then clock A is synchronized with clock C. If point holds then it makes sense to say that clocks are synchronized, given, if, hold then the synchronization allows us to build a global time function t, the slices t equals const, are called, simultaneity slices. Einstein did not recognize the possibility of reducing them to easily verifiable physical properties of light propagation. Instead he just wrote, We assume that this definition of synchronism is free from contradictions, and possible for any number of points, and that the following relations are universally valid for this reason. And since more recent developments are not so well known, some physical papers still present the assumption of consistency of Einstein synchronization among the postulates of relativity theory. Max von Lauer was the first to study the problem of the consistency of Einstein's synchronization. L. Silberstein presented a similar study although he left most of his claims as an exercise for the readers of his textbook on relativity. Max von Law's arguments were taken up again by H. Reichenbach and found a final shape in a work by A. MacDonald. The solution is that the Einstein synchronization satisfies the previous requirements if and only if the following two conditions hold no redshift. If from point A two flashes are emitted after a time interval dt is recorded by a clock at A, then they reach B separated by a time interval dt is recorded by a clock at B. Reichenbach's round trip condition. If a light beam is sent over the triangle ABC, starting from A then the event of return at A is independent of the direction followed. Once clocks are synchronized one can measure the one-way light speed. However, the previous conditions that guarantee the applicability of Einstein's synchronization do not imply that the one-way light speed turns out to be the same all over the frame. Consider von Lauer and Wales round trip condition. The time needed by a light beam to traverse a closed path of length L is L, C, where L is the length of the path and C is a constant independent of the path. A theorem states that lauer wales round trip condition holds if and only if the Einstein synchronization can be applied consistently in hold, and the one-way speed of light with respect to the so-synchronized clocks is a constant all over the frame. The importance of lauer wales condition stands on the fact that the time there mentioned can be measured with only one clock thus this condition is not rely on synchronization conventions and can be experimentally checked. Indeed, it is experimentally verified that the lower weyl round trip condition holds throughout an inertial frame. Since it is meaningless to measure a one-way velocity prior to the synchronization of distant clocks, 
Experiments claiming a measure of the one-way speed of light can often be reinterpreted as verifying the lower whale's round-trip condition. The Einstein synchronization looks this natural only in inertial frames. One can easily forget that it is only a convention. In rotating frames, even in special relativity, the non-transitivity of Einstein synchronization diminishes its usefulness. If clock 1 and clock 2 are not synchronized directly, but by using a chain of intermediate clocks, the synchronization depends on the path chosen. Synchronization around the circumference of a rotating disk gives a non-vanishing time difference that depends on the direction used. This is important in the Sagnac effect and the Ehrenfest paradox. The global positioning system accounts for this effect. A substantive discussion of Einstein synchronization's conventionalism is due to Reichenbach. Most attempts to negate the conventionality of this synchronization are considered refuted, with the notable exception of Malamont's argument that it can be derived from demanding a symmetrical relation of causal connectability. Whether this settles the issue is disputed. History. Poincaré. Some features of the conventionality of synchronization were anticipated by Henri Poincaré. In 1898 he argued that the postulate of light speed constancy in all directions is useful to formulate physical laws in a simple way. He also showed that the definition of simultaneity of events at different places is only a convention based on those conventions, but within the framework of the now superseded ether theory. Poincaré in 1900 proposed the following convention for defining clock synchronization. Two observers A and B, which are moving in the ether, synchronize their clocks by means of optical signals. Because of the relativity principle they believe to be at rest in the ether and assume that the speed of light is constant in all directions. Therefore they have to consider only the transmission time of the signals and then crossing their observations to examine whether their clocks are synchronous. Let us suppose that there are some observers placed at various points, and they synchronize their clocks using light signals. They attempt to adjust the measured transmission time of the signals, but they are not aware of their common motion, and consequently believe that the signals travel equally fast in both directions. They perform observations of crossing signals, one traveling from A to B, followed by another traveling from B to A. The local time is the time indicated by the clocks which are so adjusted. If is the speed of light, and is the speed of the Earth which we suppose is parallel to the axis, and in the positive direction, then we have. In 1904 Poincaré illustrated the same procedure in the following way. Imagine two observers who wish to adjust their timepieces by optical signals, they exchange signals. But as they know that the transmission of light is not instantaneous, they are careful to cross them. When station B perceives the signal from station A, its clock should not mark the same hour as that of station A at the moment of sending the signal. But this hour augmented by a constant representing the duration of the transmission. Suppose, for example, that station A sends its signal when its clock marks the hour zero, and that station B perceives it when its clock marks the hour. The clocks are adjusted if the slowness equal to T represents the duration of the transmission, and to verify it, station B sends in its turn a signal when its clock marks zero, then station A should perceive it when its clock marks. The timepieces are then adjusted, and in fact they mark the same hour at the same physical instant, but on the one condition, that the two stations are fixed. Otherwise the duration of the transmission will not be the same in the two senses, since the station A, for example, moves forward to meet the optical perturbation emanating from B, whereas the station B flees before the perturbation emanating from A. The watches adjusted in that way will not mark, therefore, the true time, they will mark what may be called the local time so that one of them will be slow of the other. Literature. Darigol, Olivier, The Genesis of the Theory of Relativity, Seymour Poincaré 1, 1 to 22, DOI, 10.1007-3-7643-7436-5-1.
D. Dykes, Becoming, Relativity and Locality, in the Ontology of Spacetime, online. D. Dykes, The Ontology of Spacetime, Elsevier 2006, ISBN 0-444-52768-0. D. Malament, 1977. Causal Theories of Time and the Conventionality of Simultaneity, Naus 11, 293-300. Gallison. Einstein's Clocks, Poincaré's Maps, Empires of Time, New York. W. W. Norton, ISBN 0-393-32604-7. A. Grunbaum. David Malament and the Conventionality of Simultaneity, a reply, online, S. Sir Carr, Stachel, did Malament prove the non-conventionality of simultaneity in the Special Theory of Relativity, Philosophy of Science, Volume, 66, No, 2, H. Reichenbach, Axiomatization of the Theory of Relativity, Berkeley University Press, 1969, H. Reichenbach, The Philosophy of Space and Time, Dover, New York, 1958, H.P. Robertson, Postulate vs. Observation in the Special Theory of Relativity, Reviews of Modern Physics, 1949. R. Reinasiewicz, Definition, Convention, and Simultaneity, Malament's Result and Its Alleged Refutation by Sir Carr and Stachel, Philosophy of Science, Volume, 68, No. 3, Supplement, Online, Hanoch Ben Yami, Causality and Temporal Order in Special Relativity, British JNL. For the Philosophy of Psi, Volume 57, Number 3, pp. 459-479, Abstracts Online